About six years ago, I started using Docker and although it's a quite amazing technology, it can be hard to understand as you can see on this question where I want to apply some changes of files to my container and it didn't work because I had a wrong understanding of it. In this video, I'm going to show you what I did wrong and what you can learn to get a better understanding how Docker images and container works. In this question, we had the issue with ASP.NET Core, but I think some of you are not familiar with it. So I want to show you the example with Nginx. It's a quite common and high performance web server. It's basically the same because here we also have a web server, but I think this is more easier to understand from your perspective and more of you will know Nginx. We use the official Nginx base image and now let's have a look at our example. This is my Docker file. I'm using Nginx as base image as shown previously and I'm adding here just a single HTML file in the public HTML folder which is served by Nginx. The file my underscore index HTML can you see here. It's just a HTML file with some demo content. Nothing special here. Let's do the same which I did in the Stack Overflow post. We create an image by typing docker build and the T flag is the tag, which basically is the name of the image. Let's call it my Nginx image. And the dot will assign the build context, which means Docker is searching for a file called Docker file per default in this folder. So this should work. And we can see the image is there. My custom image is built and tagged. Since our image is just a template, it actually won't do anything. We can type docker image ls grab my so we can see my custom build image but this image is not running because it's just a template so we need to create a container first i have prepared a comment here it's the same as i did in the question docker run we run the container detached this means we don't have it in the foreground it's like a systemd service in the background we give it a name my web server one and use the image which i create previously here one special thing here is the p flag it will forward port 80 from the container to my host machine here because we have a web server there and i want to test it in the browser later so we can just run this command and it's running with the port forwarding enabled we can just open a browser and go on localhost you can see this is the content of my html page it is currently working as I want it. Let's change something, which is a common scenario. For example, we add a paragraph here and say, this is another text newly created. We save it. You can see it's saved on a disk. And now I want to have this page served and it doesn't work. Normally on a traditional web server, I just would refresh the page. I don't have to do anything else, but it's not working. So for some situations on a web server, you need to restart it. Normally not for HTML files, but we can try this here. We type docker stop my minus web server one. It's now stopped. We can't use it anymore. You see, we get an error and we start it again with docker start now let's have a look but it's still not working so what's the problem here this is the same problem which i had years ago in my stack overflow post and to understand and also fix this we need to get a bit deeper into this topic you can think of an image as a template like a cookie cutter for example once you have a cookie cutter you can produce as much cookies as you like all having the same shape and form we created this image by the docker build command. There are easier ways, I will show them later, but for now we will use the docker build command. And like a cookie cutter, this command is only creating a template. A cookie cutter won't give you cookies, but you are on a good way to do this. It's the same with containers and images. The image is the template. We can use this to bake cookies or containers, but we don't have already done this. Baking in Docker means we need this template or image to create a container. 
the docker run command does this but it's a bit misleading first because it won't just run a container like we run a process like a classical installed web server we just start it will first create the container and then start it from the entry point the entry point is defined in the docker file and defines a script or a comment which should be started when the container starts. In our example, this is the Nginx web server. Cookie cutters are usually not thrown away after each cookie. Images are likely that once they were built, they stay as a template and can be reused for multiple containers like we can bake multiple cookies with a cookie cutter. For example, to host a test or a quality environment of the same application, we can use the same image. You cannot change the content of an image without rebuilding it. The only exception is a mounted volume. This is usually used for persistent things created by containers like the data directory of a database. Unlike images, containers are short-lived and therefore not desired to store persistent data. It's common to destroy containers like you would eat a freshly baked cookie. This is not a problem as it may sound first. Just use the cookie cutter and bake some new identical ones. Docker does the same. The image is used as template to regenerate them and volumes will provide persistent data if required by the container. A container is only created once by its image. If you modify the image, it's used for all newly created containers afterwards, but not for the already existing ones. It's like you decide to use another cookie cutter. This won't change the shape of already baked cookies. You need to eat all of them to have only cookies with the new design, but you cannot apply this to the old ones. For my example, this means stopping and starting will not change anything because the same image is used. We just restart the container with the old image. We need to stop the container first and then remove it. This would destroy the container. Docker remove my minus web server one and it's now gone. If you haven't already rebuilt the image, we need to do this first because images are not automatically updated with those files I changed here. We need to build it and you can see this is not cached, so it's now in the image present. Now we can run our container again. So now we can open the browser and it will show up the new content we just applied here. So it works now. I used plain docker comments here because it's an excellent way of learning how things works in the background. When you are working with docker and you know already how those things works, then it's just annoying to always type those three comments for every change so that they get applied to your container. But there's an easier way, docker compose, it's designed for multiple containers in a single environment. For example, you have a PHP site with a database, then you can define multiple containers here and manage them together. But also for single containers, it will give you benefits. We have a simple example here. It's basically the same I did with docker run. You can see I have a service, a container called my web server one. It will build the current context. So this docker file and it will forward port 80 from the container to the host. To use it, we just type docker-compose up parameter build and d. This will build the context here and d, you already know this from this comment, it will run the container in the background. Now we can just change the environment, for example, add something here. We just rerun this comment and because we use the build switch, this comment will take care of everything we did before in the background. So this means stopping the container, destroying it and creating a new image and starting the new container with the new image. So we just can open the browser, refresh it and all changes were applied. We can repeat this. It's just a single comment. We don't have to care about using the right comments here. This is already the downside of this. When you are a beginner, I would not recommend to directly start with this because it will hide the magic a bit for you. So it's harder to understand. But for daily usage, this is perfect. I use only Docker Compose for all my Docker environments. I don't use the plain Docker commands, which I showed before. 
I hope my video has helped you to get a better understanding of Docker. I will link you a few other videos I did in the past here. You may want to see them too. What do you think about Docker? Is it a good tool for you? Do you like it or do you don't like it? Please write it in the comments. I'm happy to see your feedback. Bye. Up to the next time.